Good evening, everyone. My name is Heather Gigi, board chair for the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 72nd Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce annual meeting and awards banquet. So first of all, I would like to call to order the 2019 annual meeting. I'm excited to introduce tonight's Master of Ceremonies, Mark Skiba, owner of MediaWorks Wisconsin. After a 25 plus year broadcasting career in positions in community relations, business development and advancement, five years ago, Mark founded what became MediaWorks Wisconsin, a media company that provides advertising agency, video production, and digital media management services to clients across the Midwest. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mark Skiba. Good evening. In just a few short minutes, the Ridges staff will begin serving tonight's dinner to our tables. And then the plan is to have our program begin 45 minutes or sooner uh, after that. And then we'll look at the highlights of our 2019 year. Our keynote speaker, Senator Patrick Teston, and the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Annual Awards are on the schedule tonight. At this time, I'd like elected officials to stand up and be recognized. On behalf of the Heart of Wisconsin, I'd like to personally thank you for attending this evening's event. We'd also like to take just a moment and thank tonight's sponsors for your continued support. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Marshfield Clinic. Our annual dinner sponsors are Aspirus, Domtar, Enbridge, Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa, Heartland Farms Incorporated, MediaWorks Wisconsin, Paper City Savings, Solaris, and Verso Wisconsin Rapids Mill. Yes, thank you to our presenting sponsor and our dinner sponsors, and dinner is served. So continue wherever you are uh, in your dinner and we'll get started. When I was thanking sponsors uh, before dinner, I forgot to thank what some might consider to be the most important sponsor that we have. And that would be our wine sponsor. So thank you to Urco Worldwide as our premier wine sponsor and for providing the bottles of wine I your table tonight. Those of you that know me would be shocked that I would forget the wine sponsor, that's for sure. So. An organization such as a chamber cannot thrive without its volunteers. And these volunteers are the heart and soul of the heart of Wisconsin. We would like to acknowledge the chamber's ambassador group. If the ambassador group would please stand. Ambassadors, can we have you stand please? Thank you for all of your dedication and commitment. You know, there's a lot of time involved in being an ambassador. Now we'd like to introduce our 2019 Board of Directors. Please stand and remain standing to be recognized, and we'll ask that everybody else please hold their applause until the end. Our 2019 Board of Directors is led by Chairperson Heather Gigi from U.S. Bank. Our Vice Chairperson is Phil Hartley from Verso Corporation. Our Governance Chairperson is Alex Hewitt from Nash Law Group. The Treasurer is Jill Steckbauer from Mid-State Technical College Foundation. Nate Weidman from Next Home Partners is on the Board of Directors. Craig Bernstein from Mid-State Technical College. Jill Dillon from Marshfield Clinic. Janine Malcolm from Mary Kay Cosmetics. John Preuss from M3 Insurance. Lisa Skiba from Aspirus. Jamie Giebert from the Town of Rome and Sue Lindell from Sand Valley Golf Resort. Please give these people a round of applause for all they do for our organization. In 
As with any successful organization, you need dedicated, innovative, and hardworking staff to support the community and plan events such as this one. We'd also like to recognize the Heart of Wisconsin staff. Our office administrator is Mary Martin. Head of Events and Marketing Coordinator, Bridget Sheraton, real soon. Yeah. Our Engagement Director is Carrie Schwingle. Krista Kuhn is the Vice President. And Angel Whitehead is our President. Please give them a round of applause. It's uh, probably no surprise to you that our keynote speaker tonight is Senator Patrick Teston. At 31 years old, Senator Teston is the youngest state senator in Wisconsin. He represents the 24th Senate District, which includes parts of Wood, Jackson, Adams, Washera, and Monroe counties, as well as all of Portage County. Senator Teston is a lifelong resident of Wisconsin, growing up near the Michigan border in Marinette, where he learned the value of hard work at a young age. After graduating from the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point in 2011, he remained in Portage County and took a job as a sales professional, currently working for a local wine distributor. He was elected to the state Senate in 2016. In August of 2017, he married Hannah Henderson. The couple lives in the Portage County town of Hull with their dog, Riley. He serves as chairman of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee. Please help us welcome Senator Patrick Teston. Well, thank you, Mark, for the nice introduction. And great to see everyone here tonight. So now that we've had a really good dinner, I suppose it's time for a nap. Uh, first off, I'd really like to thank the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to address you tonight. But more importantly, I also want to thank all of our sponsors who make this event a success year after year. So I figured tonight I would talk about what we're doing to enhance rural Wisconsin and the broad approaches that we're taking within the legislature to ensure that our rural communities remain great places to live, work, and raise a family. Now, while we're doing some great work, we also have to address the fact that we do face some challenges. And some of those challenges that we face is that we're aging. I'm reminded of that every morning when I find a new gray hair in the side of my head. But it's a problem that we need to address. And we also have to realize with that we have lost population for the last 50 years. And with the loss of population, it makes local businesses struggle to find consumers. It also makes sure that new businesses try to locate the more populous areas. And so when we lose population, our class sizes oftentimes decrease. And with a reduction in enrollment also means the loss of valuable funds. It also means that our rural communities are less likely to have access to quality health care. That's why the Rural Wisconsin Initiative was formed several legislative se legislative sessions ago where legislators who represent primar primarily rural districts came together to address our workforce, healthcare, technology, and educational needs to ensure that our rural communities don't fall by the wayside to our more urban counterparts. So when we talk about some of the issues that we're focusing on, technology, broadband expansion, that has been a huge, huge emphasis in the legislature. Internet access today is as important on the farm and in the classroom as it is at, in a, at a tech startup in Madison. And that's why last budget, we increased our broadband expansion program to the tune of $23 million. And even with this last biennium, increased that by more than $40 million, making sure that we connect all people in the state, whether you live in the city of Milwaukee or in places like the town of Rome, just to the south of us, Internet connectivity is no longer a luxury. It is a necessity, and we have to consider, consider it part of our infrastructure. We've also worked on legislation to provide tax incentives for broadband providers to make it easier to do business so companies like Solaris can continue to do their great work here in the area and connect folks, whether it's in the town of Plover or in the town of Rome and beyond, for high-speed internet. When we talk about health care, we want to make sure that everyone has access to quality health care. And that's again why during the last biennium we incorporated two grant programs to help our rural hospitals and clinics train up their workforce. 
We've also introduced legislation to help increase access to dentistry in our rural communities. 38 out of 72 counties in Wisconsin are considered dental deserts. And when you talk to school administrators, the number one reason why kids miss school, two things. So I worked on legislation with State Representative Tony Kurtz out of Wanawiak, which would create a new scholarship program housed at the Marquette School of Dentistry aimed at providing uh, scholarships for individuals that want to practice in rural communities, trying to attract these professionals into our areas. We've taken similar approaches with physicians and advanced practice, advanced practice clinicians. We've also worked on legislation to help reduce cost of health care for prescription drugs. We are going to be voting on a very important bill next week in the Senate Health Committee that is going to help regulate pharmacy benefit managers and provide transparency within the process and for consumers to help drive down the cost of drugs. We've also, this legislation that was a bipartisan bill and signed into law, a major step therapy reform. So decisions are being made between a patient and their doctor and they don't have to run into red tape and bureaucratic hurdles with their insurance companies or in some cases even at the Department of Health and Human Services. Now the last two components that we're trying to address within the Rural Wisconsin Initiative are really interconnected. In fact, they're all interconnected. But it deals with education and our workforce. Now it's no secret that people can't live without a steady income and that's why we've worked on legislation that increases opportunities for youth apprenticeship programs as well as adult apprenticeship programs. Trying to give students real world experience before they leave the classroom so hopefully we can harness and identify uh, what they like to do. And so when they graduate, they're well ahead of their peers. Because we have to understand that while a four year degree, college degree may work for some, for others it does not. And that's why in the legislature you've seen a renewed investments into our two-year technical colleges. And I've got to say, Mid-State, are you in the house? A prime example of what they've been able to accomplish, really leading the charge and setting the bar high for our technical colleges right here in the state. And it's thanks to their leadership team under President Mondike that really I firmly believe that Mid-State is by far the leader in our technical college system right here in the state. So thanks for all that you do. I also firmly believe that within our educational system, we have to show that there is dignity in all forms of work. We all know that we have struggled, that we have more jobs available than bodies to fill them. And since taking office, some of you are aware and others may not be, that's why we started the On the Job series within my office where once a month I go work a different job in the district for a day to highlight some of the great employers that we have. But more importantly, it gives me a better perspective on how and what we do down in Madison impacts people back home. So to, for example, I got to work construction with Altman Construction on a apartment complex site north of Stevens Point. Got to uh, put on some waders with the Beagle family at Dempsey Cranberry Company. And I've got to say, it was a lot harder than I had anticipated. And for those of you who have never been in a cranberry bog at harvest, if you're afraid of spiders like I am, don't. <laughs> I got to meet tens of thousands of eight-legged friends that wanted to hop aboard the SS Teston. Thankfully, they stayed at bay. I've even had the opportunity to work at uh, Badger State Fruit Processing Company in Pittsville, as well as Mariani here in town. I had the opportunity to work at Bolgren's Grandview Dairy Farm here in Northernwood County. I even spent a day working at Garrison Septic, and I gotta say I was pretty good at that, and I, I, uh, I think that's partly from the, the job that I do down in Madison, working through some of the stinky stuff, but <laughs> it was a really great experience, and I've even delivered flowers with Wisconsin Rapids Floral and Gifts, and yes, I made sure my wife got flowers at the end of the day. But, with all these jobs that are available, we also have to make sure that we have affordable housing. So there was a report commissioned by the Wisconsin Realtors Association last year that showed that we have some challenges when it comes to workforce housing. We have seen a decline in home ownership. We've seen increased costs to build new construction. And that's why we've really tried to address this with recent legislation introduced in, in the legislature. Three of the bills that um, I have tailored aim to attract um, for rural communities. Now we have a number of programs and initiatives that are 
housed within the Wisconsin Housing Economic Development Authority, but oftentimes these programs are geared for more low-income earners and oftentimes get utilized by larger communities such as Milwaukee and Madison. So a couple of the bills, Senate Bill 792 creates a tax credit for the rehabilitation of older homes. This was legislation that I had authored with Representative Rob Summerfield where it creates a refundable 10% tax credit for those who rehabilitate outdated homes up to $15,000. Now, we view this as a legislation as a win-win for everyone. One, we get people to try and buy older homes. I know my wife and I, we bought a home that was built back in the 60s and we've made some major renovations and I think we learned what every style of floor in there was for the past five decades when we redid our floors in our house. But it will help increase values of our homes which also increases our tax base for our local communities. Another bill that we're working on, Senate Bill 484, would create a workforce housing tax credit that I've authored with Representative John Nigren out of Marinette. What this would do would take 10 million of WIDA surplus and create a new pilot program in which businesses can work with their local leaders at the local level and create projects that will work best for their community and then work with WIDA to determine what mechanisms and what incentives can be used to hopefully attract new developments. This is legislation that has passed the assembly and I am quite optimistic we can hopefully pass it in the Senate by the end of this month and get it to Governor Evers' desk before the session runs out. And then lastly, Senate Bill 791 would create a tax exemption uh, for workforce housing materials. So roughly right now, one third of the cost of new construction goes into the increased cost of the materials as well as all the regulations and everything else that you have to go through to build a new house. So it has created a massive hurdle for developers to build new homes. So we think this will help incentivize more uh, developers to, to build. And then lastly, we're currently working on a large scale rural economic development package that I hope to have ready this fall. This is an issue that we have been working on for the better part of two years. And if you may remember, during the last legislative session, there was talk and uh, an expansive rural economic development package had passed the assembly, but stalled within the Senate. And so we're hoping to revive that this fall and we'll keep you posted on that. You know, I've got to say, when I take a look around this room and this community at large, we have come a long way since the Great Recession back in the 2000s, 2008, 2009, when we saw factories close their doors, people lost their homes, businesses went under. You know, it reminded me of that famous quote that a recession is when your neighbor loses their job but a depression is when you lose your job. And I think for many in this community, the Great Recession felt more like a depression. And there was kind of a haze that hung over this region for a long time. And to this day, I still tell people, have people tell me, this is a dying community. This is a dying area. And I tell them, you have to open your eyes and look around. Take a look at all the great things that are happening right here in central Wisconsin. We have seen the explosion of Sand Valley to the south. We have seen the expansion of Alexander Field. We have seen all the incredible developments in downtown where we have completely revisioned how we approach the Wisconsin River, worth it being a formerly working river and still is, but to have new developments. Things like the Boys and Girls and YMCA that's being built as we speak, Metalco coming in, and major credit to Zach Verwing for that, landing that one. That was a huge development. We've seen the expansion of ND Paper and Buren. We have a lot to be thankful for. The great work that's being done by our Spirus Riverview, the great work being done by our technical colleges. Friends, I gotta tell you, for all the doubters out there, I don't see it. I see a community on the rebound. <laughs> Currently, we're the stars of our own comeback story, whose end has yet to be written. And if we do our jobs right, that chapter will never be written. If we continue to move our communities forward, if we can continue to enhance what makes us unique, that chapter will never be written. Our job will be to write our chapter and then pass the pen to the next generation so they can write theirs. And I'm confident as I look around this room, we're up to that challenge. So will you join me? Will you join me? I firmly believe that our best days are ahead of us, our best years are ahead of us. Let's keep moving central Wisconsin forward together and ensure that this is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you. Amen.
All right, thank you again, Senator Teston. It's time to recognize local achievement. Many people and businesses give their all to make our community a better place to work, live, and grow. And we're in a room full of those amazing people tonight. Our first award is the Community Spirit Award. This award is sponsored by ERCO Worldwide. And it's given to groups or individuals who demonstrate outstanding volunteer spirits and make a significant impact in our community. This year's Community Spirit Award winner is The Door to Twelves, Alicia Golden. Alicia demonstrates outstanding volunteer spirits throughout the community. She impacts the community by hosting many fundraisers and gives back dollars to local causes. She never hesitates to help those in need. Her dedication and passion for helping others are unmatched. Alicia does a yearly fundraiser to raise money for Toys for Tots, among other countless causes. Alicia is well deserving of the Community Spirit Award. On behalf of the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce and the entire community, thank you for your involvement and dedication to our community. Alicia, please come forward to accept your Community Spirit Award. What? Oh. <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> Thank you. But you forgot to mention my signature trait, procrastination. For example, calling my Aunt Pam last night at 8 p.m. to help me with a speech for tonight. So forgive me if I'm unprepared. In 2015, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and also beat it. It was then I realized how much people could come together in a time of need. And that's when I met Lee. Lee sponsored a dollar at the door and unexpectedly surprised me and my mom with some money and a hand-woven quilt for her breast cancer fight. Since then, I have been blessed to have been able to give back to the Wood County Sheriff's Rescue, Toys for Tots of Wood County, Wood County Foster Care, Jeremiah's Crossing, Wisconsin Rapids Canine, Nakusa Canine, Alex Dove Foundation, Big Brothers Big Sisters, the Eric Steinhorst Family, Tavern League and Safe Ride Program, Roaring for Gage, Boys and Girls Club, the Fly High Playground, um, the Brian Ortner, Wisconsin Proud, Special Olympics, Breast Cancer, Rapids Family Backpacks, Humane Society, Coats for Kids, The Food Pantry, River King Sponsor, and The Mead School Dinner. <laughs> Thanks to my mom for always helping with my crazy busy schedule. <laughs> Thanks to my Aunt Pam for always answering my late night calls. Braxton, you are my rock and I'm so glad I was chosen to be your mom. Lee, thank you over and over again for giving me this great opportunity and helping me pave my path. One second, I don't know where I was. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do all the good in the world. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. Thanks again to all my friends, family, patrons, and supporters. Without you, I'd never be able to make any of this happen. Thank you. Next up is the Chamber Champion Award, and it is sponsored by RMM Solutions. And this award recognizes an individual that goes above and beyond to assist the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce with promotion, events, and support. The award winner has been a long-standing community member and a staple to the Heart of Wisconsin for many years. Within his efforts, he dedicates time, funds, and support to the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber. Is a business owner of Venus Gentlemen's Club, Door 212, and others, 
Lee Chipman continues to see the importance of the chamber and impact the chamber can make in the business community. He has a passion for the community and wants to see it continue to grow. Just to name a few, Lee has supported Swing Against Cancer, the Alex C. Dove Foundation, Jeremiah's Crossing, Neighborhood Table, Allied Veterans Council, Heroes Cafe, Pub Pilot Safe Ride, the Family Center, Malcolm's Marvelous Cancer Crusade, the Boys and Girls Club, the Mead Elementary Charter School, Wood County Canine Fundraiser, and many more. Lee has donated over $300,000 to the local community. We appreciate all that he has done for the heart of Wisconsin and the community. Lee Chipman is an impeccable man who radiates the Chamber Champion Award. Please welcome this year's Chamber Champion, Lee Chipman. I didn't have anything ready. That's funny. Now, I kind of wondered why my son showed up. <laughs> the top one down I was the, the top one. Um, I don't know what to say. I didn't have anything prepared. I was blessing to have Alicia recognized because truly, when, when we when we open doors, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. We want to be part of the community, and like what Pat said. I, we, we really feel that the community has fell, and now we need to pull it back up, and we need to put it back together. And again, if everybody did there just a little bit, we'd have awesome community again. And again, is I didn't have anything prepared, but the heart of Wisconsin's great, Alicia's good, my whole table's there with Amy Scheid and Amy Weemark, and my sister Pam Ironside, which is truly the greatest person I know. And Alicia, wow, <laughs> truly, you are everything this community needed. So I am sorry, Phil Brown, you are my superhero. <laughs> and it's really weird, and Pat, if you want to work a Saturday night, if you want to sling some drinks or drive for a pub pilots, I was listening to you, what, what, whatever you said, perfect. I mean, you'll see how the, the rest of the people live. <laughs> On a Saturday night that need a ride home, and maybe you'll need a ride home after that. So, hey, I am sorry. I am very thankful to live in this community, and I know that we're going to build it back up where it was. Alex, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> and Zach, the mayor way back there, did he get a cheap seat or whatever? <laughs> I wasn't prepared and I apologize. It was all about Alicia tonight. We knew it was going to Alicia put and t door 212. Hey, we have a park that's got a really cool clock. That's all I can say. Thank you, everyone. Next up is our Ambassador of the Year, and this year's Ambassador of the Year Award is sponsored by the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Marshfield. This award is voted on by the Ambassador Group, and this year's recipient is a shining example of true dedication. <laughs> Mr. Friendly has been involved with the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce for over 25 years. He is a staple in the Ambassador Group. Bob McElvain retired from J.C. Penney after 40 plus years in retail. Bob also was an active volunteer for the Lincoln High School cheer team. He's married to Wanda and has two children. And as a volunteer, he has committed time and resources to the entire organization. The energy and enthusiasm are never in short supply when he's involved. Bob, your buddy Lucky is shining down on you as you receive this award today. Congratulations to Bob McElvain on being the 2019 Ambassador of the Year.
Well, this is indeed a surprise. First of all, I've actually been with the chamber for 45 years. That's four years longer than I worked for J.C. Penney. <laughs> and uh, yes, I had the opportunity <clears throat> to move to two large penny stores back in the 80s because our store was so successful. And I turned them down to keep my kids in the Lincoln High School. They were, they were in their final years of high school. Terrible time to move kids away from their school. So I did volunteer a lot at the high school and I retired. In fact, I averaged about 500 hours a year. So besides driving cheerleaders for football, basketball, and wrestling, I uh, helped in the field house. I volunteered to f uh, chaperone field trips for some of the teachers. And uh, <clears throat> it was very rewarding. My garage is posted with all kinds of signs that are about four feet by eight feet long. Thank you, Mr. Mack, from the cheerleaders. Every year I got a new one. And they were truly sweet kids. So this is really a big surprise, and I am so proud that the Boys and Girls Club are going to occupy my penny store. I have been in there a half a dozen times over the winter, and uh, it has truly been transformed into a, a great building. <coughs> the uh, uh, superintendent, Austin, down there lets me come down and look at the YMCA, the VA cl uh, clinic, and pennies. So that's a great addition to what used to be there. So thank you very much. Next up is our Shining Star Nonprofit of the Year. This year's Shining Star Award is sponsored by Encourage. The Shining Star recognizes a service organization or public institution. This year's Shining Star is the Small Business Development Center at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. One of 12 in Wisconsin, the Small Business Development Center at UW Stevens Point offers no cost confidential advising and resources, as well as fee based workshops, conferences to both startup and existing businesses throughout nine counties, Adams, Langlade, Lincoln, Marathon, Oneida, Portage, Vilas, Wapaka, and Wood. In 2019, the SBDC at UW-Stevens Point saw 369 clients, provided over 1,100 hours of consulting, and served an additional 316 people through training offerings. They also helped 20 businesses start and helped businesses gain almost $2.5 million in capital infusion. The SBDC at UW Stevens Point is sponsored by a, or supported by a staff of three. That includes Melissa Meschke, the director, Mark Spears, who is a consultant, and Zia Yang, the outreach specialist. And it's housed in the continuing education department on campus. The Wisconsin SBDC is celebrating 40 years in operation in 2020. We are excited to share this milestone with our stakeholders and clients. And at the SBDC at UW Stevens Point, they treat all businesses, no matter how large or small, as though they are their own. Through their passion, experience, and dedication, they hope to assist all business owners in the areas they need it most. The center provides educational opportunities through individual counseling session, sessions, as well as conferences and presentations. And they build strong relationships with community leaders so all businesses can achieve their version of success. To accept the Shining Star Nonprofit Award, please welcome Melissa Meschke and Mark Spears. Evening, everyone. I apologize for the lack of voice ahead of time. Um, I, as a relatively new uh, director to the center, this is really an honor to be recognized um, for for the work that we've done. Um, I've had this position for about two and a half years. Mark hired in only a couple weeks after me, um, and Zia is actually even newer to the team. So this is really an honor to be uh, recognized. But we couldn't do it alone. Um, we have a great team. Like we said, we've got our staff of three. Um, I also have my two bosses here, Jenny Jenny Resch and. 
and Wayne Sorensen. Um, we couldn't do anything without their support. Um, they really believe in my vision, and they see my dream, and they let me achieve it. So thank you for that. Um, and we just really look forward to more, uh, the more impact that we can have on the community. And again, this is really an honor being so young to this position. So thank you. Now it is time to introduce our Citizen of the Year. It is an honor and privilege to introduce you to the recipient of the Citizen of the Year, sponsored by the Wisconsin Rapids Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. The Citizen of the Year Award recognizes someone whose work, community service, and involvement demonstrate what it means to be a good citizen. At this time, I would like to bring up Phil Brown to introduce this year's winner. Well, thank you very much, Mark, and great to see everybody here tonight. What a great crowd to the Chamber of Commerce. Hi, Lee. Hi, Alicia. <laughs> Zach. Good to see you way back there. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, it's just fun to be here tonight. But uh, this year's Citizen of the Year wants you to know that he was born and raised right here in River City. Uh, he says he uh, is proud to be a Rapids kid from Sand Hill. And most of you locals know where Sand Hill is. He attended local schools four years at Two Mile School, four years at Grove School, uh, four years at Lincoln High School, and four years at what was then Wisconsin State University, Stevens Point. After graduating from Point, he moved away for a while, earning a master's degree in American Studies uh, from the University of Wyoming at Laramie. After two years as an instructor of English at Western Illinois University, he returned to Stevens Point to teach English and creative writing. In 1980, he began uh, uh, River City Memoirs, a series of articles focusing on the history of Southwood County for the Wisconsin Rapids Daily Tribune. He wrote over a thousand stories through the end of 2015. In 1983, then Wisconsin Rapids Mayor James Kubishak bestowed the title of City Historian on this year's Citizen of the Year, making him the first and only historian to ever had that title. Since then, he has written 20 books about Midwestern history, 12 of them pertaining to the local history of Southwood County. His most important ongoing contribution is the local uh, history magazine Artifacts. Uh, since 19, uh, or since uh, 2004, he has published um, 58 issues with 59 in progress. Meanwhile, as board member, director, archivist, and publisher, he has overseen the day-to-day -day operation of the Southwood County Historical Museum for most of the last 35 years and continues to do so. Somewhere along the line, he started calling himself Uncle Dave, which seems very appropriate. And uh, it is now my great pleasure as president of the Southwood County Historical Society to introduce our very own Uncle Dave Engel as the 19 or the 2019 Heart of Wisconsin Citizen of the Year. Thank you, Phil. In uh, reference to Sand Hill, uh, Mark and Skiba and I had a conversation about his dad, Jack Skiba, who was one of the sports heroes of Grove School when I was there in the center of Sand Hill. Uh, somebody said, Phil Brown is their hero. 
and uh, that's appropriate to what I'm going to do tonight because uh, I would not be here speaking to you without the efforts of Phil Brown for the last 15 years, uh, supporting me at the uh, local museum and in various writing activities, and nominating me for this award. And I wonder, what could I do for Phil? Uh, he's already been Citizen of the Year, <laughs> 2013. He seems to know everybody in this room and uh, pretty much everybody in town. A lot more people than I do. But he does have a problem. Uh, Phil's not from here. <laughs> <laughs> Phil comes from a place we can't name. It's a city of losers. <laughs> Bad sports, whiners, and all around no goods. <laughs> Furthermore, the school that he went to, the high school, has a name we cannot say without laughing. She's laughing. <laughs> It's similar to a certain Packer a defensive player named Ha Ha Clinton Dix. <laughs> but I have a solution anyway to this problem. As city historian, I have certain uh, powers that other people don't have. I've been uh, determining uh, the history of Wisconsin Rapids for a lot of years. Sometimes I decide who gets in the history and who doesn't, who is good and who is bad. <laughs> like Santa, sort of. But history becomes what I say it is. And this seems like the right place and the right time to do this for Phil. Uh, tonight I'm going to make uh, Phil, Philip M. Brown officially a member of the Lincoln High School class of 1973. <laughs> Taking that one step further, from tonight on, he will have been born in Wisconsin Rapids at Riverview Hospital. <laughs> January 27th, 1955. To make that official, this is the new with Lincoln High School annual for 1973. <laughs> this is a proclamation that names uh, Phil Brown from here. <laughs> This is the senior class of 1973 of Lincoln High School, Wisconsin Rapids. Phil Brown, president. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is with his classmates. <laughs> this, is the, this is the newspaper article from uh, January 28th, 1955, the Wisconsin Rapids Daily Tribune. Mr. and Mrs. S.G. Brown, 821 Quality Row, announced the birth of a son January 27th at Riverview Hospital. <laughs> so, it's official. <laughs> No longer do you have to be embarrassed by your origins. <laughs> and you can start uh, learning uh, the Lincoln High School alma mater and getting ready for those reunions. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Phil Brown. Thank you.
All right, uh, let's uh, congratulate again. Dave Engel, the 2019 Heart of Wisconsin Citizen of the Year. That makes it time for our Entrepreneur of the Year. That's sponsored by Crockett Septic. The Entrepreneur of the Year recognizes a business that has initiated economic growth, community service, leadership, and innovative efforts used to adapt to marketplace change. Starting a business takes passion and dedication. And Chatterbox Restaurants and Catering reflects the true soul and passion of an entrepreneur. Not only has this business had tremendous growth, but that growth has led to a new location and redevelopment of an existing property. Involvement and leadership are key attributes that Kathy Habits showcases. Kathy was born and raised in Wisconsin Rapids. She is a former United States Marine Corps Sergeant and is the owner of Chatterbox Restaurants and Catering. Chatterbox Restaurant and Catering is located on 80th Street in Kellner. Their new location was built by renovating the 1,900 square foot former Bancroft State Bank to a 3,200 square foot restaurant with a bright sunlit dining room and double commercial kitchen. The new restaurant also features high-tech, eco-friendly heating, plumbing, and electrical systems. Chatterbox operates on-site and in the field, traveling as far as Toma a couple of times a day to deliver catering. They currently employ 12 residents, ranging in ages from 15 to 58. They pride themselves on excellent customer service and teaching kids to not only work, but to grow. This year's Entrepreneur of the Year goes to the owner, Kathy Habits of Chatterbox Restaurant and Catering. As someone eloquently said, oorah. Yeah. <laughs> My speech is very simple. I'd like to thank the employees of Chatterbox for sticking with me all these years and going with me through a growing pains of building a, a new place. And thank my family and my friends, Mary and Bob Wright, for recommending me and all of you local businesses that have hired me so that I can grow mine. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with you this year and in the future. See you then. Thank you. That makes it time for the Innovative Business of the Year. The award for uh, Innovative Business of the Year is sponsored by Wood Trust Bank. This year's Innovative Business has invested in new processes, demonstrated commitment to new products or services, and created an organizational culture of innovation. In a world of ever-changing needs, Northward Pedal and Paddle developed a unique business in central Wisconsin in 2016. Northward Pedal and Paddle was founded as a local adventure, rental, and delivery service, specializing in kayaks, canoes, paddle boards, fat tire bikes, and snowshoes. Northward offers many options for area residents and tourists alike. With online and 24-7 phone customer booking services, you can reserve your next adventure very easily. Of course, everyone doesn't want to rent for a day or a weekend, which is why Northward has partnered with Wood County Parks to bring you area lake pop-ups where people can enjoy rentals on an hourly basis. These are good opportunities for one-on-one -on -one instruction as well as for first-time paddlers. The adventures don't stop when the snow flies, which is why Drift, Northward's Bigfoot mascot, was created to demonstrate sneak peeks on area offerings and events. The first being the Bigfoot Bus Tours. These tours cross county boundaries to bring people to local artisans, food cooperatives, breweries, and coffee roasteries, while also incorporating a scenic adventure into the trip, such as snowshoeing through a hollow or kayaking a hidden stream. Officially starting in 2020, Northward has announced their Wellness Pays program. 
Northward is your champion to bring custom tailored solutions to promote improved employee health, increase employee morale, and talent attraction. As a recreation hub, Northward continues to make recreation a top priority for attracting those to our community. Their creative business is dedicated to giving experiences to those who are willing. The investment in this business has created a new culture in our area. We are excited to see their business thrive in central Wisconsin. What's in the future for Northward? Follow them on Facebook and Instagram to see what Drift will be showing us. What is the next adventure? As the marketing guy, that's a really good placement. Uh, congrats to this year's Innovative Business of the Year, Northward Pedal and Paddle. To accept the award, please welcome their owner, Patrick Gatterman. You know what, the hardest part is having my voice when my name is Mark Skiba, <laughs> introducing myself. Uh, and then of course following Phil Brown. So um, I didn't pre prepare anything, so in front of me is the, um, I guess what Mark's gonna say. My goal is kind of introduce who has kind of brought me to this area. So um, Innovative Business of the Year, yeah, we're a kayak and canoe rental company. That's what we really do. So what this really should be called is, it's a problem solver and partner entrepreneur of the year. So as a problem solver, we want to reach out to Wood County and say, hey, what can we do for you? And really, what can you guys do for us? So Wood County's really stepped up. The city of Wisconsin Rapids has really stepped up. Um, honestly, it's a landscape. So I want to give a shout out to, you know, honestly, Zach Verwink and the whole city staff has been phenomenal to work with. Yeah, and I'm sorry guys, I'm not from here. I'm moving here. This will be my home. Uh, but it takes me some time. So you know, once again, four bedroom, two bath in the city, kind of, you know, like that's what I need. Um, but like I said, the city's been great. So, and I also kind of want to give a shout out to a couple of guys that have been really entrepreneur, you know, for me, who have developed myself. Um, actually, Jason Gruenberg, uh, what he convinced me to do is buy a 1929 car wash. <laughs> Um, so I don't think, yeah, we own the Shammy Car Wash now. Uh, <laughs> but you will see that kind of develop over the next kind of 12 months into our rental hub. Uh, but, you know, personally, I want to, I couldn't do this without my support staff. So I'll call her a lot of other names, like, you know, she's my director of operations, she's my marketing specialist. Uh, obviously, my girlfriend, Julianne, she's been a rock for me this whole time. So honestly, as a person who moved here six months ago, I couldn't be happier. So for everyone here, the Chamber of Commerce, everyone. I, so I was in this meeting room next door last night. 176 people, I thought, man, this place is packed. So we're all coming in and people are still piling in. I'm like, uh oh, where are we sitting? No one's sitting on my lap, I can tell you right now. And then I find out there's a second room. This is great, great attendance. I appreciate everyone here. So on behalf of Northward, thank you everybody. That makes it time for the Regional Impact of the Year. The award for Regional Impact of the Year is sponsored by Mid-State Technical College. The organization must, uh, or business, must show significant regional growth and expansion of their business or organization. Showing community service and leadership, using innovative efforts to adapt to marketplace change and be a Heart of Wisconsin Chamber member. For 35 plus years, a little unknown town in central Wisconsin has been supporting one of the largest gaming tribes in the United States. From a small trailer with a drive up window that only sold tobacco products, a little smoke shop across the road from a potato field took hold. A tiny housing community with a big voice stood tall and grew their business day by day. First, a little bingo hall, Next, adding a few slot machines, and later, a handful of blackjack tables. Eventually, an entirely new facility was needed, and the current facility opened its doors in 1993 to what is now known as Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa. Currently, there are approximately 240 employees, of which 20% are tribal members. The casino has an annual payroll of approximately $12 million that flows into the local banks and credit unions, as the Ho-Chunk Nation has gone to a direct deposit system. 
More recently, Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa has been able to sponsor and or donate upwards of $100,000 a year to local and regional organizations. Some of the support Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa lends to the community includes the Wisconsin State Trap Shoot Association, Disabled American Veterans Chapter 55, Neighborhood Table, Cranberry Blossom Festival, Run for the Fallen, Nakusa Giant Pumpkin Fest, Oktoberfest Aspirus Riverview Foundation, Aquaskiers, Wisconsin Rapids Rafters, Golden Sands Speedway, Saratoga ATV UTV Riders Club, the Southwood County Humane Society, Port Edwards Street Dance, the Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater, and the Weekend in Rome. Not only does Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa offer support, but also they play a key role with many initiatives in the area. Alexander Field Airport Digital Displays, the Wood County ATV UTV Trail and Route System, the Bicycle Trail System, Wisconsin Rapids Funding Request, Health Services Program for employees and community members. Additionally, the tourism impact on economic development is huge. Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa continues to not only support its own cultural heritage, but that of other ethnicities as well, including Ho-Chunk History, Community Heritage Days, Powers Bluff, Historical Monument Dedication. Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa has played a significant role in growth in the community. Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa is an innovator that continues to make a regional economic impact. This year's recipient of the Regional Economic Impact of the Year Award goes to Ho-Chunk Gaming Nakusa. To accept the award, please welcome Executive General Manager, Jim Webster. I will uh, keep this fairly brief. Um, I couldn't be more delighted to accept this award on behalf of all the employees um, and the Ho-Chunk government overall who supported us um, over the last 25 years. Um, it's given us the opportunity to um, engage the community, um, to get involved in some of the plans that were underway already. The bicycle trail system, the ATV system, Powers Bluff development, um, and it's uh, really shown me how much spirit and, and activity existed um, in this region. Um, very much so like Senator Teston uh, said, this is a growing, reviving community and I look forward to uh, assisting with that in the future. Thank you very much. We are all ready to the business of the year. The business of the year award is sponsored by the town of Rome and it's awarded for the economic impact on the community, business growth, dedication to customer service, community service, and leadership, and innovations to adapt to marketplace change to a Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce member in business for at least three years. Quick Trip began in Wisconsin in 1965. Since that time, Quick Trip has grown to 680 stores with 25,000 co-workers in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa. Quick Trip serves 8.5 million customers each week with convenient, clean retail stores. The company also produces many of their private label products featured in the stores. Quick Trip's La Crosse, Wisconsin-based headquarters operates its own commissary, bakery, and dairy. All three facilities are FDA approved and produce Quick Trip's own line of sandwiches, Soups, fresh bakery products, including white, wheat, bread, and buns, muffins, donuts, cookies, and bagels, as well as the Nature's Touch brand of dairy products, milk in the bag, ice cream, and water. Quick Trip also maintains its own distribution center and a fleet under the convenience transportation name. Being the producer, Quick Trip sets the standards and quality of the products that are sold in the stores. 
Quick Trip's state-of-the-art food safety lab assures customers that the food offered is of the highest quality. Being the distributor means these products are shipped to each Quick Trip store daily, which helps guarantee freshness. Being the producer and distributor also enables Quick Trip to price private label brand products lower than grocery stores. They are dedicated to their customers and staff. The leadership they give to the community is outstanding as they continue to grow. This year's recipient of Business of the Year goes to Quick Trip. To accept this award, please welcome Carl Rick. Well, thank you. It's uh, been a great event that to, tonight, once again, a great event that you guys were gracious enough to invite me last year. Really all the credit for this award goes to uh, the folks sitting at the table with me who are true to form are all too humble to come up and accept the award tonight. The introduction to this award though really does sound like our Monday morning management meetings. What can we do to push the envelope every day in nearly every way in which we operate? We're happy to be a part of your growing community. Uh, we're happy to open more stores in your community a number of years ago, a couple of years ago here I should say, over on Riverview Expressway. We're excited to grow even further this coming year uh, with the teardown and the rebuilding of the store out on 73 in the northwest side of town. You have some tremendous things going for Wisconsin, Wisconsin Rapids, which are clearly evident tonight. We wish you all the luck in the future and we're excited to be a part of this growth with you tonight. Thank you so much for this award. Have a great evening, and we'll let you get out of here and go see Bucky win again. <laughs> May I please call to the stage Chairperson Heather Gigi and Phil Hartley for the traditional passing of the gavel. Hello again. This past year, it has been my honor and privilege to serve on the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and serve as its 2019 board chair. I'd like to take a moment to thank my fellow directors, our staff, and you, our chamber members, for your continued support and engagement. As the 72nd Annual Meeting and Awards Program comes to close, I'll take this opportunity to pass the gavel to Phil Hartley, the 2020 Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Board Chair. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Heather. Uh, thanks, Angel, and all the staff of the chamber, and thanks to the rest of this board, uh, wonderful board of directors for this honor. Um, I would like uh, <laughs> I'd like everybody to stand up for just one moment. Everybody stand up. You've been sitting down for a long time. Everybody stand up. Stretch out. Stretch out. Oh yeah, you can sit down now. <laughs> boy, boy, the power you have in this thing, right? Yeah, yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. That's my first responsibility as the president of this board. I'd like to take a roll call of this meeting, so if you hear your name, would you please acknowledge that you're here? Amy Scheib? Yeah. Dave Farnborough? Yeah. <laughs> Mary Brazo Brown? Here. There we go. <laughs> Phil, it's going to take like an hour to call all these people up. Oh. <laughs> a long little bit. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we'll stop the roll call. But I want to let you know, uh, they only gave me 25. No, five. Five minutes, five minutes <laughs> to give this speech. Uh, happy such a large crowd is here tonight. Thank you very much for supporting the chamber. A reminder that to not let this be the only chamber meeting you attend or the only chamber function you attend. Please take action and get involved in your chamber. As part of my job at Verso, I get to speak to the new teammates that we hire in Wisconsin Rapids. And part of my talk is around, that's not my phone, is it? It's Bob's. <laughs> Bob, you, you had to steal my moment, didn't you? Oh, well, say hi for me. 
<laughs> part of my uh, part of my talk to the new the new the new hires is around leadership, and, and I'm blessed at Verso that my name is on that front page of the you know the organizational chart. But there are no dots that come down from my name, right? There are no one that reports to me. I'm sort of on an island. And, and I think that was probably done on purpose by someone a lot smarter than I. Uh, but I do tell the new teammates that I still believe I am a leader at that mill. And I tell them leadership comes with the attitude you bring, the work ethic you bring, and the caring for others that you bring to the table. And the wanting to make a difference in the results of our mill. Right, a verso. It does not matter where you sit on the organizational chart, you're a leader in that mill. I then challenge them to get active in making the mill win the day and, and win the future for, this, you know, for the town, for our community. Now I'm making that same challenge to you tonight. My life drastically changed about 15 years ago. I went from being a member or a citizen, a member of this community, to being an active member of this community. I was blessed that Store Enzo, my employer at the time, allowed me to attend the Wisconsin Rapids Chamber of Commerce Leadership Program. What an eye-opener that program was. It allowed me to see the city of Wisconsin Rapids and the whole central Wisconsin community closer up and get a clear view, a, a 2020 vision, which no doubt is a tagline of this year for everybody. Uh, but not just with blinders on, but not with any biases or tunnel, but to get a big holistic view of our community. And it was to me an amazing program, and it made me want to get active in our community. The Leadership Program is one of many programs that our chamber organizes and executes to help our community and our businesses. And, and I think that's the key, to get active, to be active in our community, to give back. So many people are in a box and I'm willing to come out of it. And as I get older and older and older, uh, I find I'm getting more claustrophobic and I hate boxes, really do. And I hope we all do, and I hope we help everyone else that's in those boxes find their way out. It's time to get active and, and invest in this community. It's really an exciting time. I know some of it's been highlighted this evening, but in the next year we'll be opening some amazing new facilities, right? The Community Aquatic Center, thanks to the city for spurring that on. Uh, the YMCA Boys and Girls Club, the new building that I can watch from my window being finished. It's been amazing. Uh, the li I just saw the library is working on an amazing new addition. And uh, if you talk to the representatives here tonight, I'm sure they'll tell about you. Tell it to you. Get involved. Several new companies are planting the seeds in our community and getting ready to open for business this next year. We've heard of a few. Uh, the successes and growth of golf and sporting venues in, in, in our area is amazing. Really second to none for a community of our size. It, it's just amazing. Uh, the arts in our community, the PAC, the Arts Council, the Cultural Center, the Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater, again, second to none. We have the Southwood County Historic Museum with the incredible Phil Brown. Welcome to Wisconsin Rapids, Phil. Hey. Yeah, I hope someday they'll uh, change me from Millinock at Maine, you know, but we've been here a while, right? But and Dave Engel, thank you, Dave, for your presentation. Uh, we have amazing nonprofits in this community, and the people that lead them are exemplary. Terry Johns, Pam Ross, Brett Salscheider, Beth Peabody. There she is, my friend. Uh, Ken Anderson, just to name a few, there's many, right? Uh, thank them. Uh, there's great work being done to promote our community by Meredith and Morgan at the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, some of the work they put out. And we're blessed to have encouraged this advocacy and generous support of our community through the last several years. We support the growth in local businesses. Uh, they've been great to give back. We've heard about that tonight. Some of them, Quick Trip, otherwise known as where half my paycheck goes. <laughs> All right? The whole chunk Nation, Northwoods, uh, Pedal and Pedal, and Chatterbox. Kathy's here tonight. Kathy is the reason I had to go out and buy a little larger suit to wear tonight. Because <laughs> she caters many events at our mill and, and does it fantastically. Uh, those local businesses, as you see, support our community and make it strong and viable. Thank you so much. Very proud of our chamber team. Angel, Krista, obviously we got some several new and exciting and energetic young people joining our team. There are going to be some amazing change, changes in this chamber over the next few years. Hope you get involved and help. I'm really pumped up and anxious, and along with the rest of our board, to be able to help these ideas come true. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. When our businesses thrive, our community thrives, and our people thrive, the Chamber is here to help make that happen. I challenge all of our Heart of Wisconsin community 
to get involved with your chamber and your community. Don't be a bystander, be a leader. It's time to get active in making our community succeed, to best and be proud of living here in the heart of Wisconsin. Thank you. And speaking of uh, seeking of being involved, I want to give a few thank yous out for the sponsors tonight. Marshall Clinic for being a presenting sponsor. I'm going to give them a round, Marshall Clinic. The premier wine sponsor, Urco, or why, right? Dinner sponsors, Aspirus, Domtar, Enbridge, Ho-Chunk Gaming, Heartland Farms, MediaWorks, Mr. Mark, Solaris, Verso, Wisconsin Rapids. That's right. Okay. Please see a program for awards, uh, table decorations, and the raffle prizes. I, I'm pretty sure I'm a winner, so I'm going to run back there myself. At least I'm hoping, otherwise this job might be short term. We'll see. Table decorations go to the person at each table that has the closest birthday to today. Okay? So figure that one out. Okay, please leave the mirrors, however. The mirrors are not the prizes. Okay, so leave those. Raffle prize tickets have been drawn and they're posted in the other room, so go check and see if you want a prize. Okay, in the other room. And, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold. One more thing. Heartfelt thanks. <laughs> That's where it came in. A heartfelt thanks to the sneaky handsome Mark Skiba. Sneaky handsome. <laughs> for emceeing tonight's events. I want to announce that the. Huh? Yeah, I will. I want to ask the board members that are present for the Art of Wisconsin to please meet in the back room. We'd like to get a group picture that Krista telling me what to do already. So thanks, Krista. That concludes tonight's program. We're going to adjourn the meeting. Everyone have a great evening. Thanks for coming.